Greetings! Stay in the know with Dr. Now. Today I'm going to discuss the theory of evolution. But before we get into the meat of evolution, let's discuss what I mean when I say theory. There are generally two definitions for the word theory. The one most people run into in their everyday lives is a form of speculation or a hasty guess at the reasons for a situation. The second definition is one that scientists use to express a collection of provable facts that explain a particular phenomena. Take gravity, for example. All of the current understanding on the way gravity works is called gravitational theory. When someone says the theory of evolution, they aren't referring to some vague guess as to the reason for the diversity of life on our planet. They are referring to the body of verifiable data, experiments, and evidence that explain the concept of evolution. Scientists are constantly finding new information on our planet that fit perfectly, like puzzle pieces, into evolutionary theory. It's been over 150 years since the concept of evolution was proposed, and every observation since then has confirmed its validity. So what is evolution exactly? To put it simply, it's small changes over very long periods of time. In the harsh eat-or-be-eaten animal world, any advantage a life form may have means a better chance of survival. Survivors get a chance to procreate and pass these successful traits to their offspring. It's like passing the test of life. The same is true for small changes that are not beneficial to survival. A life form with a disadvantage with regard to surviving in its environment might not live long enough to successfully procreate. There are critics of evolutionary theory whose beliefs conflict with the notion that we all started from less complex life forms. While they are the minority in the scientific community, I'm going to take some time and address some of these criticisms. It's very important that everyone understands the benefits of science through the study of the natural world. I'm going to tackle three criticisms of evolutionary theory. Irreducible complexity, the origin of life, and Trans-species evolution. The first concept of irreducible complexity. It means there are some parts, like wings and eyes, that are so complex that if any piece were missing, the part would be non-functional and therefore must have been designed the way it currently is. A simple example of this concept is a mouse trap. The argument states that if any piece of the mouse trap is missing, the trap is useless and will not function. While it is true that the mousetrap with missing pieces will not function as a mousetrap, however, half of a mousetrap could function as a device that holds paper together like a clipboard. Also, evolution doesn't only add pieces, it removes pieces as well. This sort of give and take capability makes it very possible to create complex biological systems through evolution. But what about the wings and eyes I mentioned before? Do we know of any examples of eyes that are less complex than human eyes? Do we know of any creature that has wings or partial wings that cannot fly? Why yes! The gradual development of wings and eyes can be observed in many living forms today. For example, the membrane that allows some squirrels to glide looks very similar to the more advanced setup that allows bats to actually fly. And on the subject of vision and the evolution of sight, there are examples all around the world of creatures with less complex vision organs. The flatworm has very poor eyesight, but it does have eyes. Their eyes are very simple and can only tell light from dark. But I'm sure you would agree that bad vision is better than being totally blind. And indeed, there are birds who have evolved with eyesight far better than human eyesight. Now on to the second criticism that I had mentioned, that evolution doesn't explain the origin of life. No, it sure doesn't. Just like gravitational theory doesn't claim to explain the origin of gravity. And even though science cannot explain the origin of gravity, we have been able to study its effects and do things like send people to the moon or place global communication devices called satellites into orbit. Evolution doesn't attempt to explain the origin of life, but like gravity, the discovery of evolution has also had its benefits on mankind. Currently, computer programmers use the concept of evolution to solve complex engineering problems and autonomously optimize systems and designs. Computers with evolutionary programming are left running for days on end and sometimes engineers are surprised by the results. The best answer to a design problem might be something they had never even considered until they used artificial selection to explore the possibilities step by step. And let's not forget about genetic engineering. 
the theory of evolution has explained many of the mysteries found in the blueprint of life we know as DNA. Despite the controversy over the power of genetic engineering, there is the potential to do great good, much like the discovery of nuclear physics. Spider-Man's uncle said it best, with great power comes great responsibility. The last criticism I'm going to talk about is trans-species evolution. Some critics are willing to accept that tiny things inside our DNA change over time, but that huge changes between species is impossible. For example, dinosaurs evolving into birds, or apes into humans. They give examples such as the breeds of dogs as an acceptable genetic change. But to be honest, they are missing the point. The key concept of evolution is that DNA, the instructions for life, goes through small changes over long periods of time. We're talking about millions and millions of years. Here's an interesting fact. The genetic difference between humans and chimps is only about 2%. I'll say that again. 98% of human DNA is identical to chimpanzee DNA. While I'm talking about monkeys evolving into humans, I'd like to talk about a common question that I hear about evolution every now and then. If humans evolve from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? The answer is very simple. We share a common ancestor. Think about it like this. Europeans started colonizing America around 1492, and since that time, the environment has created a distinctive culture. Yet Europeans still exist. Before I go, I'm going to answer an age-old question. What came first, the chicken or the egg? I'm sure you've heard this one before. The answer, of course, is the egg! Two birds that were not technically chickens found each other in the wild. The resulting eggs hatched, and a genetically new and delicious species was born! A chicken! There, one of the great mysteries of the universe answered, all thanks to evolutionary theory. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've learned something about what evolution is and what it isn't. The benefits of science can be beyond our imaginations if we learn and follow the rules of nature. And conversely, closing our eyes to the immutable laws of nature can only lead to more human suffering. To discuss this topic and more, visit the Zeitgeist Movement at thezeitgeistmovement.com. Thanks for watching!